morning. Hello. Uh, my name is Paweł Skrzypek and today with Anja Warno we will tell a little bit more about the time series forecasting. We will focus on advanced assembling methods. Uh, as you probably know, we are working with the time series for the quite a long time. Uh, using the most advanced method. And today we want to briefly tell about the uh, uh, assembling. So why the assembling is important, why to use the assembling, how the assembling is used by the leading forecasting methods. Uh, I will start with the brief introduction with the some slides to introduce the topic and to provide a little bit of theoretical background. And then Anya will make a hands-on session and uh, present the different assembling methods, the results on the real data sets uh, using different assembling methods. And uh, Anya also will present uh, the advanced assembling method uh, based on the machine learning algorithms, neural networks. Uh, the methods has been prepared by um, her, so it's a very interesting and unique uh, approach for the assembling. Okay, so starting from the beginning, what is assembling? Assembling is just a simply used um, outcome from the multiple forecasters uh, to achieve better accuracy of prediction, better robustness and stability of the results. Uh, it's nothing new, yeah? the assembling has been used for the very long time, uh, mostly the uh, mostly it was used uh, in the simple form, I will present that, uh, but there uh, also was present some, there were present some additional more advanced algorithms of assembling. I will tell a bit more about uh, that um, in the presentation. Uh, why this assembly is important? Yeah? As you know, because uh, we already told about that on the previous editions of the uh, uh, data science summit uh, the real breakthrough in the time series forecasting uh, has been achieved during the M4 and M5 competition. It is the, probably the most prestigious uh, competition related to time series forecasting organized by the uh, Professor Sp Spiros Makridiakis, the legend in the time series forecasting. Uh, it is very interested that um, both winning method for the first and for the second place uh, on the M4 uh, were using uh, ensembling in the different way, but both in the very innovative way. In my presentation, I will briefly say about the winning method, about the ES hybrid, high, how the ES hybrid used the ensembling, and also how the ensembling was extended in the NBITS method. It is some kind of the successor uh, or or next method uh, related to the time series forecasting. And in the hands-on session, Anya will tell more about the other, other methods and show how it works live. Uh, the most important thing about ensembling is that improves the accuracy and also the stability. Yeah? Because having multiple ensembles, multiple forecasters allow to, to avoid some negative effect of the individual forecaster in the particular uh, period of the time. Uh, as I said, the winning method from the M4 and M5 competition use uh, very heavily the, uh, the ensembling. What are the types of the ensembling? Uh, there are some, let's say, simple uh, types of the ensembling, like VOC, stacking, bugging, and combination of this assembling. So it simply means that, uh, in, for example, in the voting, uh, we are selecting the prediction, which uh, uh, is 
provided by the most of the forecasters. Yeah, because uh, ensembling, of course, could be used for the regression and classification problem. Voting is, of course, useful for the uh, classification problem. And for example, if we want to use voting, then we are uh, selecting the, um, the class which is most voted. Yeah, so the most of the forecasters uh, predict that class. Of course, we can use additional rules for that, uh, like uh, some kind of the majority rules or to uh, extra to exclude the uh, forecasters with no predictions and so on. Uh, but general idea is quite simple. It is also very similar for the regression. We can use the uh, average of the prediction. Of course, we can add additional rules like removing outliers and so on and other combination. And uh, that's the first category of the ensembling, so this simple ensembling, and there are also advanced ensembling approaches. Uh, about two of them I will tell um, a little bit more describing the methods. But, uh, and one even more advanced uh, will be presented by Anya during the hands-on session. Very important thing is that these ensembling methods are currently very extensively developed. So new concepts, new ideas uh, appearing. Are, it looks that it's a very useful approach for the time series forecasting. Uh, how the ensembling uh, was used in the ES hybrid method, it is the winning method from the M4 competition. There are in this method, there are many innovative solutions or, or concepts. Uh, I tell, told about that more on my previous uh, uh, session on the on, on previous edition of uh, Data Science Summit. Uh, but from the ensembling perspective, the uh, ES hybrid method uh, uses very innovative approach for the ensembling. So uh, grouping different models to the particular time series. Yeah? So uh, during the training process, each model is um, rated, the, the metrics um, are calculated. In fact, in the, for, uh, the, the, the used metric is SMAP. Uh, the metrics are calculated and based on the value of the metrics, uh, each model is assigned to one or more time series uh, on which uh, uh, the results are the best. And per each time series, the set of the models, the best models from the whole training is keep kept. Yeah? Uh, so after each of the, um, uh, of the epoch, the model is evaluated against uh, all of the time series and assigned to the to the best one. Of course, one model could be assigned to the multiple time series. That was a very and uh, final forecast. Uh, final prediction on the test set is done by the set of the best model for the given time series selected during the trade. Yeah, so uh, that was a very, very unique approach to the ensembling and also very, very successful. Uh, and the second method, uh, which was uh, not used in the M4 competition, it was some kind of a successor or, or um, the method which claims to have better results than ES hybrid is the NBITS method. And the NBIT method go even more with the, uh, with the ensembling. Uh, I do not go into the details of the NBIT method because I described that on the previous edition of the uh, Data Science Summit, but generally speaking, um, from the ensembling point of view, uh, the NBITS uh, uses uh, ensembles up to 100 different models. So it ensembles 100 different model and models are, um, uh, sell or trained threefold. Yeah? There are models trained on the subset of the training data with the different loss function. 
and with the different horizon. Yeah, thanks to that, the the, the outcome of the prediction is very diversified. So it includes it increased the, the chances that uh, one single model could uh, give the wrong prediction. It increased the chances that the one um, wrong model will not uh, destroy the, the the effect of the predictions. Yeah. So in in bits the, the are up to 100 different models used for the predictions. Okay, that's all from my say, theoretical part. Uh, just for summary, there is a dynamical uh, development of the new assembling method uh, and assembling could give us, could improve the efficiency of the prediction and uh, especially increase the robustness. Uh, we are working in the financial time series forecasting and for the financial time series uh, and sampling significantly improves accuracy and robustness. So that's all about the theoretical introduction. I do my best to keep it short. And, and now Anya will present hands on session how to use this sampling and what are the results in practice. Thank you very much. So, after the theoretical introduction, I will present some real case study from our work. I will be talking about the real time series sampling on cloud resources prediction. We have a project where we are forecasting cloud resources usage. And based on the predictions, we can make a decision whether to change, for example, number of instances or not. The whole process looks as follow. Different models for time series forecasting are trained independently of each other. So they are trained as separated models. And predictions from each of the trained method is sent with, a, with the same frequency, so for example, every 10 seconds. In this way, we obtain the M predictions, where M is the number of, of forecasting methods for each time step. But it's the most convenient to have only one number and make decisions based on it. So we use an assembler that not only returns a more convenient format of our prediction, but can also correct it for us. There are several challenges that we have to face. First of all, as I mentioned before, the predictions are made in real time. And for this reason, there are often missing predictions. Uh, it may happen because there was some delay or the method is not ready for predictions yet. We also need to ensure the versatility of our solution so that the final predictions are accurate for different types of applications and predicted metrics and also robust to poorly predicted forecasters that sometimes happen. Large predictions error can lead to bad decisions and be very costly in cloud computing environment. And now I will show how we can use assembling for this problem on an example data set. Our predicted metric, our target metric is CPU usage, and our data contains 6,000 rows and these 6,000 rows are uh, CPU usage predicted uh, by five forecasters on a test set. Among the forecasters, we can find methods like TFT or NBits. And here we have plotted real value here and predictions for each of the forecasting methods. We can zoom. And as we can see, some of the forecasters actually look um, quite good. The predictions look accurate. For example, prediction two or prediction six. But we still try to improve them with assembling. We will start with fast, easy to implement standard methods. So of course we have here methods like naive mean, mean over the best subset. We are taking all possible subsets and calculate which set of features of uh, predictions has the best, for example, mean absolute error on a train set. Mean over the best n methods on k last time steps. So it's similar from the 
uh, to the previous method, but we are uh, calculating uh, error only on the last k steps. We can also find uh, weights for each forecasters, for example, with linear programming. With li linear programming, it's easy to impose constraints on the weights. We want uh, them to be positive and sum to one. We can also find forecaster weights depending on metric scores. So the better the results of a method, the more weight we give to it. And now I will show how these simple methods work on our dataset. And now I will show how these simple methods work on our dataset. So we have a simple visualization here. We have five prediction, predictors, five forecasters, and uh, four uh, of the simple assembling methods. The predictions are sent in real time, and the assembling, assembled predictions are also produced in real time. In this table, we can see uh, how good are our methods. Uh, we have uh, metrics, five metrics here, for example, mean absolute error, and the best scores are, are highlighted with green. So uh, we can see that linear programming uh, is the winner method here. However, uh, not its naive mean uh, over best subset uh, is uh, often the best uh, when on the uh, SMAP metrics. And here we can see what's the gain of our the best assembling method over the best single method, single forecaster. Uh, These light green rectangles means that this specific method achieved the best scores on uh, this period. To sum up, Ensembling methods achieve usually better scores than uh, the single forecasters. However, there is no, um, it's, it's hard to say which of the ensembling method is the best because it uh, varies across the data set. So after the simple methods, it's time to present something more advanced. We will be training neural networks with the given input predictions, historical real values, and historical errors. Each input will consist of two parts, past and future. In the past, we have uh, predictions errors for each of the forecasting methods. And by forecasting error, I mean real value minus predicted values. We have also columns indicating that we are in the past. Uh, real value, so the original uh, matrix, target matrix value, values, and time index. In the future, we have uh, predicted values for each of the forecasters, uh, columns indicating that we are in the future, and uh, we uh, cannot we cannot impute uh, real values here because uh, we uh, they are real values here because uh, we uh, they are not known in, in at the moment. And you also have time index. The train architectures are fully connected neural, neural networks, uh, convolutional neural networks uh, one dimensional, uh, convolutional neural networks one dimensional plus residual connections. Uh, convolutional neural networks one-dimensional plus attention and uh, convolutional neural networks one-dimensional plus residual connection plus attention. And the best methods uh, uh, were uh, convolutional neural networks one-dimensional uh, plus residual connections and convolutional, convolutional neural networks one-dimensional plus residual connections plus attention. attention. Uh, it's hard to say which uh, of 
those two top methods was better as this attention model it did not uh, have a large impact on on the performance in this case as i mentioned before we have issue with uh, missing values in our problem so we decided to train one more model that would be robust to potential future data gaps for some predictive models. For this purpose, we randomly removed some columns during training. Input for such networks looks very similar to the previous task, but, but uh, we are randomly removing uh, some of the columns from the input. So, for example, uh, here we, re we removed uh, values from the prediction zero and replaced uh, it with zeros. And for each of the forecasting method, we have mask, uh, which uh, indicates uh, which uh, of the forecasters' methods are not present at the moment. And the feature has a similar structure. Instead of standard softmax at the end of neural networks, we used masked softmax for this problem. The experiments confirmed that the network trained in this way is immune to potential data failures and continues to return good results. How performs an assembling method based on deep learning compared to standard techniques? So we have one more plot here, the best neural network. It was hard to choose the best method from standard assembling techniques because uh, it uh, changed uh, a lot and it was dependent on the part of the time series we are currently looking at. We can see here that uh, none of the method is the best uh, on uh, all of the metrics and that it uh, also uh, varies uh, across data set. But here, in this case, where we have uh, this best neural network assembling method, uh, it does not change at all. Deep learning method is constantly the best here, and the improvement in mean absolute error is uh, is significantly better because here we have uh, around four and here around here is less usually less than one and also the plot here looks uh, significantly better than than uh, the plots of uh, other methods So to sum up, assembling can help a lot. Even simple methods can produce satisfactory results. Assembling based on neural network may give much better results, but requires also more data to start, because it requires a reason reasonable amount of data to be trained on. And properly trained neural networks can be resistant to the deficiencies of some predictions and still give better predictions results than classical methods.